Hello students. Today we will be studying introduction to the skull bone. The skull is the skeleton of the head. Cranium means the skull minus the mandible. Calvaria is the upper part of the cranium and it is also called the brain box or the skull cap. Facial skeleton is the skull minus the calvaria. Facial skeleton is further divided into upper facial skeleton and lower facial skeleton which means the mandible. Now this picture shows us the skull bone. The entire thing constitutes the skull bone which is made up of the cranium and the mandible while the upper part of the skull bone is the calvaria or the skull cap and the lower part is the facial skeleton and this facial skeleton is again divided into the upper facial skeleton and the lower facial skeleton which is nothing but the mandible. So another picture here to show us the entire skull bone which is made up of the cranium and the mandible. Cranium can further be divided into the calvaria or the skull cap and the upper facial skeleton while mandible is nothing but the lower facial skeleton. So calvaria, bones which constitute the calvaria include paired bones that is the two parietal bones and the two temporal bones while unpaired bones are the frontal, occipital, sphenoid and ichmoid bone. What we see here is the calvaria, a superior view of the skull cap. We see here the two parietal bones and the two temporal bones. Those are the paired bones, while unpaired bones are the frontal bone here in the anterior aspect and the occipital bone which is posteriorly placed. We then go on to see the facial skeleton. It is composed of paired and unpaired bones. Paired bones are the maxillae, zygomatic bones, nasal bones, lacrimal bones, palatine bones and the inferior nasal concave. While the unpaired bones are the mandible and the boomer. This here is a picture which shows you the facial skeleton. This here in orange is the maxilla bone. So the two maxillae bones. The blue colored bone here is the zygomatic bone. So the zygomatic bones of two sides. The purple colored bone here near the midline. The nasal bones. The ones here are the lacrimal bones. The palatine bone in the depth of the orbit. And the inferior nasal concave in the nasal cavity. These are the paired bones. While the unpaired bone, the womer which forms part of the nasal septum and the mandible or the lower facial skeleton. So these are the various bones that constitute the facial skeleton. Now let us see the anatomical position of the skull bone. Skull can be kept in normal anatomical position with the help of the reed's baseline or the Frankfurt's horizontal plane. Reed's baseline is a horizontal line formed by the joining of infraorbital margin with the center of the external acoustic meatus. This diagram here shows us the reed's baseline. This green colored line which extends from 
the intraorbital margin anteriorly and posteriorly it passes through the center of the external auditory meatus this is the reeds baseline frankfurt's horizontal plane is a horizontal line joining the intraorbital margin with the upper margin of the external acoustic meatus the same diagram again when we see this red colored line this is the frankfurt's horizontal plane which passes from the intraorbital margin anteriorly goes on to beat the upper margin of the external auditory meatus we can use either of these lines the reeds baseline or the frankfurt's horizontal plane both of these when used should lie in a horizontal plane and that is what helps us in identifying the normal anatomical position of the skull bone facial skeleton clinically the entire front of the skull is considered to be the facial skeleton it is further divided into three parts upper facial skeleton middle facial skeleton and the lower facial skeleton this picture shows us the three parts of the facial skeleton upper middle and the lower facial skeleton the upper facial skeleton forms the skeleton of the forehead and it is comprised of the frontal bone as is seen here the frontal bone forms the upper facial skeleton middle facial skeleton is bounded superiorly by transverse line which passes through three sutures zygomatico frontal fronto maxillary and fronto nasal sutures while it is bounded inferiorly by the incisal edge and the occlusal plane and it is bounded posteriorly by the spino ethmoidal junction this picture here shows us the middle facial skeleton the superior and the inferior boundaries the middle facial skeleton is further divided into lateral middle third also called the zygomatico maxillary part and a central middle third which can be further subdivided into four subdivisions and those are the alveolar part the dento alveolar complex naso maxillary part and the naso ethmoidal part this diagram shows us the same what we see here is the middle facial skeleton which is then divided into a lateral middle third on either side and a central third on either side and this central third is further subdivided into four parts the alveolar part the dento alveolar complex the naso maxillary part and the naso ethmoidal part the lower facial skeleton forms the skeleton of the lower jaw and it is comprised of the mandible and this picture shows us the mandible which forms the lower facial skeleton when we go on to study the osteology of the skull bone we will study first the exterior of the skull then we go on to study the interior of the skull and finally we study the mandible bone the exterior of the skull is described as various views or normas and these are five in number norma verticalis or the superior view norma occipitalis or the posterior view norma frontalis or the anterior view norma lateralis or the lateral view and norma basalis or the inferior view the interior of the skull is described as the three cranial fossae anterior cranial fossa middle cranial fossa and the posterior cranial fossa we will be studying the features of the skull bone in this order itself first we will be studying the exterior 
as the five larvas. Then we will go on to study the interior of the skull as the three cranial fossae and finally we will study the mandible bone. Thus this was the introduction to the skull bone. Thank you.